presently located here. Well kept dirt trail, and that'll take us all the way to another set of hardball, which will then um, bring us to our first site of today. So, Badwater Basin, the lowest point in North America. I think it's 386 feet uh, below sea level. Uh, the next thing is Artist Pallet. And so it's an actual turnoff off the main road, and it's basically this loop as Diego. designated. Hey, get off Dante's view. Your name's Diego, not Dante. Um, and so uh, it's it's just a, a road that on the right hand side kind of looks like mountains like this, but picture um, an actual artist palette, which is all different types of colors. Um, your blues, your reds, your oranges. It's pretty cool. Then we got a boogie, and we'll stay on hardball. But it takes us all the way back the way we came. We start gaining elevation. We'll actually be on top of the mountains that we're overlooking the Badwater Basin. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to backtrack all the way we came to our off-road, our first actual off-road portion of the trip. And the park boundary is like right here. So we'll we'll pull off and air down as soon as we get here. Air down to our off-road. Um, PSI, um, but as soon as we air down, we'll, we'll kick it. This is the first technical terrain we'll see, um, and there's a pretty much just a rocky portion we have to climb up and around. Uh, I'll do it first and, and set the vehicle up front with the winch ready in case anyone needs it, but uh, then I'll hop out and ground guide everybody through. It's pretty straightforward um, if you listen to the, the ground guide. Um, continue through, and then basically a pull off. We're all in BLM land now at this point to the big dunes. So this will be our campsite and we're actually going to pull through the dunes and camp on the back side of the dunes. So that is day one of the trip. Overall it's 140 miles uh, from, from end to end especially with the, the loop at... Really? <laughs> it's Diego's, Diego's view. Diego's view apparently. But, um, so just some some housekeeping things when we're on the trail. So brownout procedures. So if you cannot see because the dust is being kicked up, just slow down, let's increase dispersion. What we would hate to have happen is you're trying to keep speed and you don't know that the vehicle in front of you stopped. Speeds will be five um, miles an hour under the posted speed limit. So when we're in the park, you know, five miles under and then catch up speed will be the actual speed limit. And then off road, if there's any obstacles you feel even remotely uncomfortable with, um, get on the radio, you know, we're, we're all in this together. We'll help you through an obstacle. It's, so I've got a bunch of medical gear in the back of my rig. I don't know, Not everyone. Okay. Yeah, some basic stuff. So we, um, depending on what injury, just make sure we're calling that out over the radio so we can deal with um, any medical scenarios. And then I will have um, contact with repeaters in the area as we run through. Um, so we'll always be able to call for help if we, we need it. Questions, comments, concerns? Order, I'll, I'll lead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can follow in the back. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm pretty experienced. So I mean, it, it, you know, then I can radio if something happens. You'll something. take tail end, Charlie? Yeah. Okay, so then we'll tuck you in. So it'll go white fang is, is my call sign. Black mamba. Whispering lizard or wi no, winking. Winking lizard. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll be Nighthawk. Nighthawk. Yeah. All right, and then Nighthawk in the rear. Good morning, guys. John with Rough Roads Overland here. We've got a couple of rigs joining us for a Death Valley adventure. It is day one, morning one. We just woke up, did the route brief, and now we are ready to hit the trail. The first site we will see is the Badwater Basin. So we'll see you there.
All right, squad, we are at the Badwater Basin in Death Valley National Park, the lowest point in the US, some 300 and change feet below sea level. It is mostly a dry lake bed at this point, but we'll start the hike and get to the lowest point, then hop back in the rigs and continue on our adventure. the lowest point in the United States of America, Badwater Basin. And up there is Dante's view. Right up there is Dante's view. Next time, we'll be looking down upon where we currently stand. See you then. And now we are up at Dante's view, overlooking what we just walked, right there. All right, John, do you have an Instagram? I do. What is your Instagram handle? Numbnuckle. Numbnuckle. Uh, where are we currently? Death Valley at Dante's View. Have you ever been out here before? Not here, no. What do you think so far? Pretty amazing. And you've done some <laughs> off-roading in the past? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what, what kind of rig do you have? FJ07. In 07 and you got a rooftop tent and it looks like a pretty good suspension system on it yeah it's decent it's always surprising me oh yeah hope you're enjoying the trip so far completely awesome Good afternoon. Hi. What's your name? I'm Kaylee. Do you happen to have an Instagram for people to follow? Uh, I do. It's at Kaylee Anklet, like an ankle bracelet. And you do uh, a lot of hiking or backpacking? Yes. Yep. I'm always backpacking somewhere. And where are you from? I'm from Akron, Ohio. Ohio. Okay. And what are you doing in California? We were all meeting up here for a camping trip for a podcast that we listened to, um, the Sofa King podcast. And so just hanging out, camping, and making new friends. So you flew, you bought a plane ticket, flew from Ohio to Las Vegas, is that correct? Correct. And then you rented a Jeep off of Turo. It's super cool. Um, but you've not done a lot of off-roading before? Or? No, not. And so, so far, you've done a little bit this morning. Uh, what do you think? I'm surviving. Yeah, I'm, I think it's okay so far. Wait till we uh, actually do Echo Canyon. That's where no. it'll start to get a little more challenging, but so we'll, we'll guide you through, uh, no problem. But uh, what have you liked so far in terms of the, the couple of stops that we've done in Death Valley? You know, I like the stars last night the best. Yeah, those you were... You don't get that where I'm from. There's zero light pollution. It was pretty awesome. Yes, I love that. Well, we'll, uh, we'll touch base with you a little bit later, probably tomorrow after you've seen some more, done some more off-roading, and eager to hear what you think so far of the trip. Awesome. Thank All right. You.
Sega. After successfully navigating all vehicles through the obstacle, the team continued down Echo Canyon Trail towards our campsite destination in the Armagosa Dunes.
Good morning, squad. John with Rough Roads Overland here. Day two, we're currently camping in the big dunes in Nevada, right outside Betty, Nevada. And we are currently scaling these dunes. And we'll head back to the rigs, pack them up, do a route brief, and then head to Betty to fuel up back to Death Valley National Park with the first attraction being Titus Canyon. All right, see you there. After a route brief, we packed up the rigs and hit the road, stopping in Betty, Nevada to resupply. Once topped off on fuel and water, we hit the road, headed towards Titus Canyon Trail in Death Valley National Park. Don't let it go, chasing a dream. Play you do Don't let it go Chasing a dream Play you do Thank you. 
All right, welcome to uh, MTV Cribs. Um, what do you got to show us today? Tim, why don't you come on in? Check it out. So I just bought it, 3.5 million. So this is the uh, living room. As you can see, it's real nice. So, so what's what's your name? I'm Brad Taylor. And uh, what are you doing in Death Valley? Uh, I got drug here uh, by a group of maniacs. No, we were uh, just camping and camping and running, you know, so it's, uh, it's been fun. A uh, couple challenging sections. Uh, I'm in a two-wheel drive, so uh, I'm not the smartest, uh, but uh, it's been fun. Made it. We made it so far. So, so I know you do a lot of desert running and you've mm -hmm. got dirt bikes and maybe quads and whatnot, but yep. have you done anything like this before? No, uh, usually we go to a, a spot and, and stay there, you know, for the weekend or whatever. Um, so this uh, camping and moving is is uh, it's a new uh, favorite. I, I like it. It's, it's, uh, it's very enjoyable. And uh, we, we were just on the trail, uh, Titus Canyon, a bunch of vehicles in front of us. And so I, I think the difference of what we do overlanding compared to, hey, we're just going to go do Titus Canyon Trail mm -hmm. today. You know, we've got this. Next stop is the yeah. Ubahibe Crater, the, the volcano, yes. et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you said new favorite. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're going to be doing it, you know, more often. So, um, I have three kids, which they're not with me today, um, but they'll be, that's what we're going to start doing. So if we can't go riding or, you know, take the trailer somewhere, we're going to be going to spots and maybe pick a spot and then move, you know, to a different spot because you get to see, you know, not, you don't have to drive there and drive back, you know, and all this stuff. So you can drive and move and, and stay. So, uh, pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And what are you running currently? What's your rig? And then what's your tent? I have a, I have a, um, a 2000 Forerunner. It's a two wheel drive. Uh, but I do have a three inch suspension lift with uh, width suspension, um, shocks and everything, Bilstein 5100s. Um, uh, and just roof rack and you know stuff in the back. I'm carrying a gas tank with me, so. So what have you learned so far on the trip? Um, since this is kind of a new activity, yeah, I mean, just mostly just the, the ease of being able to pack up, you know, like things yeah. like that. So ground camping, obviously in the desert, the winds are a factor. Um, and we knew that, you know, but you know, I don't have a rooftop tent. So ground, you know, obviously ground tent's the way to go. Um, and, oh, uh, oh, you want to buy mine? <laughs> so the, 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 um, the ground tent, the winds picked up this morning in the dunes and, and, uh, you know, I had to move the, you know, the truck in front of the, oh, yeah, yeah. the tent so we heard that in the morning uh, yeah so you know just little things like that um the uh what kind of gear do you think you don't have now but after doing this type of trip that you'd recommend for other people um i, I really like the the little jet heaters you guys have jet boilers the yeah. jet boilers those are cool uh, i do have like a coleman stove and all that stuff uh, it does just take a little bit longer to set up but um, it works just fine but um you yeah, just, camp table camp yeah, chairs little little, little uh, fold and half six foot table um, yeah, camping chairs, you know, whatever I have, everything I have is kind of, it slots into the back of the forerunner. Uh, I do have, you know, the big folding chairs and stuff like that, but we tried to keep everything to a minimum, keep everything where we can, I definitely overloaded, I think. Um, but I think I'd rather have more than not enough. It, so, tell us about the bump stop situation when you were, um, when you were packing for this trip. Yeah. So <coughs> after, yeah, cause my suspension set up, I don't really carry that, you know, that much heavy stuff, but after I put a 14 gallon um gas tank on the on the roof rack a whole probably six bundles of wood on the top um and then all of everything else that i had to pack um i'm riding bump stops in the back yeah. so um you know yeah thinking about you know the setup for overlanding it's a little bit different than you know the the style of stuff we do but um nothing that can't be fixed you know so awesome yeah well you can do this again sometime oh for sure yeah do it again awesome definitely well, we're, we're glad to have you The Ubehibe Crater is a large volcanic crater 600 feet deep and half a mile across. The crater was created by a powerful volcanic steam explosion, possibly as recently as 300 years ago. Next 
What do you guys think of Tea Kettle Junction? It's the greatest. Also weird as hell, but cool. Isn't it weird? <laughs> Have you been to the Mojave Road? Have you done that? No. There's uh there's gnomes and frogs. Yeah, there's like a frog cache, so everyone brings a little like frog figurine and puts it into this garden of frogs. Tea Kettle Junction. Nestled in a remote valley between the Cottonwood and Last Chance Ranges, the racetrack is a place of stunning beauty and mystery. The racetrack is a playa, a dry lake bed, best known for its strange moving rocks. How do they move, you ask? Well first, the playa fills with water, which must be deep enough to allow formation of floating ice during cold winter nights, but shallow enough to expose the rocks. As nighttime temperatures plummet, the pond freezes to form sheets of window pane ice, which must be thin enough to move freely, but thick enough to maintain strength. On sunny days, the ice begins to melt and break up into large floating panels, which light winds drive across the playa pool. The ice sheets shove rocks in front of them, and the moving stones leave trails in the soft mud below the pool surface. The group completed Lippincott Pass, which for some members who had never driven off-road was quite an accomplishment. We headed west outside the National Park into the Malpais Mesa Wilderness to camp for the final night of the trip. Upon arrival, we established camp and set out to explore our remote campsite where we found an abandoned mine. The team grabbed their headlamps and we surveyed the first level of the mine, which was extensive but only scratch the surface of how expansive the mine is in totality. After that, dinner was made and we turned in for the night. The team was exhausted after two hard days of travel, covering over 400 miles through the national park and surrounding areas. Oh, this is creepy. Look at this wood. This wood is just so thick. The team slept in and woke up in good spirits. We took more time this final morning to cook breakfast over an open fire. Eggs, bacon, and potatoes wrapped in tortillas made for the most delightful breakfast tacos. After camp was cleaned and the rigs loaded to go their separate ways, we took some group pictures and reflected on our amazing trip.
All right, John, we're at the end here. What did you enjoy the most about this trip? I like just exactly what we did traveling like from point A across vast deserts to all the cool spots and then uh, the adventures along the way, the technical sections, and then ending up 300 miles away at a new campsite. All right, Mr. Taylor, what did you like the most about this Death Valley Overland Expedition? Um, I think the, the adventures of, of new, you know what I mean? Like being able to go out and do something that I haven't done before. Uh, camping has been, I've been camping, you know, since I was little, uh, but never like we did. So like John was saying, moving from point A to point B over all day, and you're going from one terrain to another terrain and staying in a completely different area. And then again, moving and doing it again, um, and then ending up in those little adventures along the way and seeing how the, the terrain changed, the landscapes changed, the mountains changed, super cool. So um, yeah, that was probably uh, being able to, to get so many things done uh, in such a short amount of time and still feel like you got value out of it. All right, Kaylee, you flew all the way from Ohio to do this Death Valley adventure. You rented this Jeep right here. What was your all-time favorite thing for this trip? I liked having a highlight reel of the park. I've never been here before. And if I were to come out here on my own to backpack, I probably would have been able to pick like one, maybe two spots to see. And being able to see a big, huge portion of the park was really great. Um, and it was fun to do something new. I've never off-roaded. Um, so learning how to do that was great. In terms of the off-roading, what was your favorite off-roading section? Like what kind of terrain did you enjoy the most? I liked the sand dunes because I felt like it was soft and safe versus like falling off the side of a cliff. So that was fun. All right guys, so we had a blast at the Death Valley Sculpt uh, Overland Expedition. We did around 400 miles. Uh, most of it off-road, definitely day two, the majority of it was off-road. Um, three other vehicles joined. Uh, I'd like to see it continue to, to grow. Uh, I think we're planning on doing a southern Colorado adventure uh, sometime once the, the snow melts, so we're thinking May, June time frame. But ultimately, great, great group of people. Um, you know, the, the, the podcast is something I've been listening to since they started, since episode one back in, I think it was late 2016 or 2017. It was just amazing to, to actually meet a guy that I've listened to, you know, for that amount of time. You hear personal stories, you, you commiserate with them through their ups and downs, and then actually hanging out with them and doing or sharing my passion was just an amazing um, opportunity. So definitely a huge, huge shout out to Brad for um, just throwing everything in his forerunner and, and coming out here. Hopefully we, we get to see Brent and, and maybe Dave if we can get him outside of his house um, but that'll we'll, we'll see if that ends up working <laughs>